Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome to the Essential Guide to Audio Processing in Cubase 12. The aim of this series is to try to show you a little bit of the inner workings of how Cubase handles its audio data and how uh, it, we, we apply the various processes such as Vary Audio, Direct Offline Processing, Audio Warp, all of the stuff that we use to get the audio sounding as good as we possibly can. I want to demystify that process a little bit and show you both the practical um, applications of how to do that stuff, but also what it means in terms of Cubase's configuration and how we can best optimize our processes to do things as easily as possible. At the end of the day, we're here to write music. We want these tools to help us not get in our way. If that sounds interesting to you, please check out the Patreon and YouTube channel member links below. Great way to help support me. The project and audio files that I'll be using during this series uh, will be made available to my patrons and YouTube members so that you can basically follow along uh, all of the examples that I'm showing you in real time. Okay, so without further ado, let's get on with it. The first thing that we're going to have a look at today is the audio pool, but from a slightly different perspective. This isn't a beginner's course and I'm not going to um, show you every function of how to do the most basic tasks. Um, I'm going to presume that you know a little bit about the audio pool. I have done a video on it myself and I'll put a link above just as a refresher for anybody who uh, wants to get up to speed. But today I'm going to look at it from the perspective of what would we do if we wanted to reconstruct audio from the pool back into a Cubase project. And the example that I'm going to use today is this guitar solo here. Now this um, Super Noodles project, if you ever see the word noodles, it's basically just a recorded practice session. So I'm, I'm trying to get into the habit these days of recording pretty much everything I do. Um, and so every, any ideas that I have, that they're, they're captured. And this was a really simple four bar beat that I dragged out a groove agent through a very quick bass line down and some guitar tracks. So that, that's going to be the, the, the core of what we're going to be using. And today what I want to try to do is show you how I would go about recreating this guitar solo if I had comped it and subsequently decided I didn't like what I'd done and I basically wanted to rebuild the raw audio tracks from the pool. Now in order to do that we need to know a little bit about what we're talking about here. So we've got, let's, so let's have a very quick look at the, the solo itself. And when I say solo, it, I've literally just pressed record uh, and, and noodled around for a couple of minutes, hence the, the use of the term. You can see that this is the point at which I pressed record and then I almost immediately started playing. And you can see some sections in the audio where I've played some chord strums, some uh, solo lines, and this is the point where I press stop. Now, obviously I'm cycling around an eight bar loop here from five to 13, but the pool has a slightly different perspective on things. Let's have another look at it. For the most part, you can see that all of the takes um, are perfectly happy. But take one is a bit weird because we've got quite a large overlap between take one and take two. Well, I didn't play, I don't have two bodies. I couldn't play two guitars at the same time. So why are we seeing two different takes overlapping each other? And there's a bit of a mystery there that I hope to solve today. So let's get a basic understanding of what's going on. The first thing that I'm gonna do is cycle around this take one and we'll just have a listen to what it sounds like. I'll put it in solo. So it's a single phrase and then a fairly large silence. Take two starts over here. And we've got that at the beginning. Okay, stick those in your memory banks. Let's go over to the pool and have a look at what it thinks is the world view. So I'm going to click on take one and we'll see what that sounds like. Okay, so take one is correct, but here we go. That's take two. We shouldn't be hearing that overlapped data. There's something wrong there. If we jump straight across to take two, get this little bit of silence. And there's that kind of fluffed phrase at the beginning. So why are these two takes overlapping? Well, when the pool breaks audio down into regions, that's what you're seeing here. These are all regions. It makes each of the regions as big as it can. So take one is the full size of an eight bar loop, but it begins at this offset point because I pressed record here. And so rather than just representing the part of the data that I'm actually seeing in the region, it's made it a full 
eight bars wide and so we're getting this overlap and that's going to be a problem when we come to recreate this audio we need to remember that this is a, I, I think that's a bug i can't find any means of justifying why cubase would do that the second mystery is that we've got this big empty silence at the beginning of the audio if i select the top line guitar solo itself and press play there you'll hear that there's a very i've already pressed play so it's playing right now as i speak and there's all this silence. Eventually, if I talk for long enough, we're gonna hear the guitar solo begin. There we go. So where on earth has that huge silence come from? The answer is in the edit preferences section. So let's go to edit preferences and we'll have a look in the record submenu, go to audio, and you'll see this option called audio pre-record seconds. I don't remember doing this, maybe lost in the mist of time. I've set this to 10 seconds, but my pre-record option is set to 10. That means that Cubase is constantly listening to all the audio that's coming in on whatever input bus. We've got the guitar, mono guitar in, uh, is the selected bus on this track. And so when I press record, I actually capture the previous 10 seconds. In this particular case, I have 10 seconds of complete silence. And that's making a complete mess of everything in the pool. As a result of making this video series, I'm seriously considering setting that to zero. Now that it's brought itself to my attention, I don't want it there anymore because it's just causing more trouble than it's worth. And you'll see what I mean over the course of this episode. But just for now, let's leave it there. Let's presume you do want a pre-record period. That's what this silence is. That's a 10 second silence. In fact, if I close the pool down and we go back to this take one event, I'm gonna drag it out a bit. There's 10 seconds worth of silence tagged on to the beginning of the event. This is where I pressed record and all of that period in between is the pre-record silence. This is going to clear up another couple of mysteries in the pool. First one is that take one seems to start at 441,000. Just as a side note, can you see this word frames? Basically treat that as samples in this uh, context they're synonymous. So this is basically 441,000 samples. My sample rate is 44.1 kilohertz. Doesn't take a genius to figure out what's going on there. We've basically got 10 seconds of pre-record and the recorded take, the like marked indicated beginning of the recording uh, accounts for that, for that lead in time. From that point onwards, all of these samples are exactly the same length. We've basically got eight bars at 90 BPM 44,100 kilohertz, that's a pretty easy sum. I'll just take one of these in the middle, uh, 261, 261, 8567, 261, 8567, minus 16, 767, 940,800. If we divide that by eight, that's the number of bars. Each one of those has four beats in, so one beat would occupy a second of time if the BPM was at 60 BPM, but it's at 90 BPM. So let's multiply it by one and a half. Lo and behold, 44,100. So that's where the numbers are coming from. The difference between these two numbers is eight bars worth of um, song at 90 beats per minute. Okay, that's mystery one taken care of. Mystery two, let's deal with this origin time. What I'm gonna do very shortly is I'm gonna create a duplicate copy of this guitar solo track and I'm going to attempt to recreate this looped recording session entirely from the pool. So I need to I need to be as forensic as I possibly can be in order to figure out how I'm going to need to do that. Let's have a look at this origin time, 63487. Well, let's have, let's find 63487 in the song. Okay, and I'll just set my locator there so we know exactly what's going on. Well, that's in the middle of nowhere. There is no origin time there. Of course, we know that we've got 10 seconds of leading on this recording. So if I pick my uh, audio track up again and drag it to the left, sure enough, that's exactly where the song marker is. So now I know that when I drag this thing out of the pool with this 10 seconds of leading, I'm gonna need my first take, take number one, to start at 63487. 
if I really want to generate a 100% perfect replication, I'm then going to need to trim 10 seconds of this silence off. We'll do all of that shortly. Then we've got our various eight bar loops and we've got a little bit of trailing um, take, take 11. This is where I press stop. So without further ado, I'm going to collapse that. I'm going to duplicate my track. And now I'm going to try to rebuild this take as if I'd thrown it away or done something to damage it and I wanted to rebuild it from scratch. Now, sadly, you can't just pick up all of your takes and drag them into your looped area. That doesn't work. I really wish it did, but it won't. Watch what happens. So if I, if I say, yes, put them all on the track, please, it puts them side by side. Now, I could pick each one of these takes up and drag it down into place and that will work. Okay, so that's one way to do it. If you've got an awful lot of takes and they're disappearing off into the distance, pick them up and move them just as a kind of extra freebie. If you use the shuffle um, setting on your uh, snap, then just pick this up and let go again and it'll snap to the nearest uh, empty space. Don't obviously need to do that, it's just a nice little tip. And you can put all of the takes together and do it that way. So that's one way to accomplish the task if I'm trying to rebuild that. I still need to sort out that uh, rogue take one. But at the moment, we're just looking at how to get the data out of the pool itself. The second option is to drag them individually. If you're not dealing with a massive number of takes, it might be faster to just pick them up. Unfortunately, if I was doing this ordinarily, I would have my audio pool on the other monitor. But I can basically pick each one of these takes up drop it into the project, and then the pool very conveniently disappears. Uh, I, don't, I don't know of a way to actually make the pool stay on top all of the time. Uh, please put it in the comments below if you do, because ordinarily you have an always on top option, but the audio pool doesn't have one. So that's option two, pick them all up and drag them out individually. I'll just go away offline and take care of all that tedium, and then I'll be back in a second. Okay, here's all the takes dragged out of the pool again. Now I just need to fix take number one to make sure it's got the right offset. So the origin time is 63487, but we've got that lead in time. I'm just going to drag that off and make it full size. I've still got the song marker set to 63487. So I know that this song marker is correct. I'm just going to zoom in. There's any number of ways that you can do this. To be absolutely honest with you, very often I'll just do it manually. But, but in, the, uh, in the info bar at the top, you can see that the take is currently set to 6428. So let's set that to 63487, and that'll snap it in place. And then finally, I need to get rid of that 10 second silence. Remember I said I was gonna recreate it exactly? Well, at the moment we've got this unnecessary 10 seconds of silence. So I'm gonna get rid of it. Current song time is 15 seconds 287 set that to 25, 287. And now the song marker is exactly where I want this event to start. Drag it forwards. And now there's just one pretty obvious thing to fix. This one's really easy though. Just get my scissors out, switch back to snap and done. And that is a guitar solo completely recreated out of the pool from scratch. Not as easy uh, as, as you might have imagined that would be, but nevertheless, we've done it. That's the important thing. We've rebuilt a guitar solo completely out of the pool. In the next episode, we'll carry on having a look at the pool, see if there's any more information that we can find in there that's going to be useful to us. Hope you enjoyed this one. Please hit like if you did. I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.